Provincial Grand Master Paul Reeves. This is a very sad time for the province. Can you please bring us up to speed? Well, as you know, at the beginning of July, the Provincial Grand Master was in Broomfield Hospital having a procedure related to his cancer. And at that time, he was given the results of a recent PET scan, which showed that having endured radiotherapy, chemotherapy and immunotherapy for the past year, the cancer had spread and no further treatment was possible. He was released home and died the same evening in the early hours of the morning. I was his deputy for five years and he was a friend and someone who I looked up to as our provincial Grand Master. He enjoyed his Freemasonry and he was totally committed to his role as PGM. And in fact, while he was undergoing chemotherapy, sometimes he would go out to meetings when he was feeling completely washed out rather than let the brethren down. In fact, the number of cards and letters that have been received by the family via the provincial office attest to the love and affection that the brethren felt for him and he will be sorely missed. The funeral will be on the 29th of July, but due to the COVID-19 restrictions will be a strictly family only affair. In normal times, they would have liked to have had a much larger presence of Freemasons, but will, when restrictions are lifted, organise a memorial service that we can all attend. Until then, they ask that Freemasons don't line the route and don't attend outside the church, because it's a small community and if we do so, it will displace some of the locals. What I am going to do is ask the Assistant Provincial Grand Masters if they will organise Zoom meetings with their lodges and that at nine o'clock on the 29th of July, we all take wine in memory of departed merit. Can you explain how a province works without a provincial Grand Master? A province without a PGM is run by the Deputy Provincial Grand Master, who is known as the Deputy Provincial Grand Master in charge. And he does that until a successor is selected. Now, successors are selected by Grand Lodge and they're named at the meetings of quarterly communications. Theoretically and possibly, Grand Lodge will be able to select and announce a successor at the quarterly communications in September, but more probably in December. There's a huge backlog of provincial Grand Masters who've not yet been invested, who were appointed earlier in 2020, and it is possible that there will be a delay in 2021 before a successor can be invested. And in fact, in Essex, it's normally been the September meeting where we have investitures. So theoretically, I could be the Deputy Provincial Grand Master in charge until September next year, but it could be sooner. The executive and myself have worked with the Provincial Grand Master for long enough to know how he would want this province run. And I can assure the brethren that's how it will run until the successor is in place. The Provincial Grand Master had very much hoped that he'd be able to continue until at least 2022 so that he could see the festival achieve its £6 million target. Unfortunately, that was not to be. And in fact, due to the lockdown, we are now significantly below where we need to be if we are going to reach that target. Until now, you have fulfilled both the role of communications officer and provincial charity steward and therefore in charge of the festival. And you, you've indicated that you need to step down from the communications role so that you can focus your efforts on the festival. And I very much hope that the province get behind you and help you achieve the target of £6 million. Charity has, of course, continued with the Almoners COVID-19 appeal. Can you bring us up to speed with that particular initiative? Indeed. Immediately the lockdown was announced we realised that many of our members would suffer hardship through redundancy and through lack of income through their businesses that had been forced to close down. We set up the Provincial Almoners COVID-19 appeal and the generosity of the brethren and lodges and chapters that led to a £51,000 fund being set up in very short order. So far, 278 brethren have benefited with grants from the fund, totalling a £48,000 in total. It was a fantastic effort by the Brethren and has been essential for looking after our Brethren in times of need. Essex in general has uh, been a huge supporter of 
of COVID-19 initiatives. Can you tell us a little bit more about this? Freemasons up and down the country have been doing a lot of work during the lockdown, working in the community to support those in need as a result of COVID-19. And in Essex, it was no different. And I would like to thank the many, many brethren that worked with Worshipful Brother Lee Taylor, one of our APGMs, in delivering PPE equipment to 3,700 workers in 320 care homes in Essex. They supplied visors and hand sanitizers to all of them and to all the district nurses, the mental health nurses, the ambulance service um, across Essex. It was a fantastic initiative and it was very much appreciated by those who benefited from it. We also have some good news about uh, Essex Light Blues. Can you bring us up to speed on this? Yes, we, we launched the Essex Light Blues on the 7th of July. It's Facebook based, so to join it, all you need to do is go to Facebook, search for Essex Light Blues and click the join button. There's no commitment to joining and anyone who's 41 or over and still wearing light blue, whether they're expecting to get dark blue next year, they're entitled to join. And the benefit is that they will be able to extend their enjoyment of Freemasonry socially across the province and with and without their wives and families. Get, getting back to charity for the moment, sir, can you tell us a little more about the Essex Freemasons Community Fund? Yes, and this is something we need the assistance from the Brethren. The Essex Provincial Charity Fund and the Essex Freemasons Community Fund, together with a £30,000 grant from the MCF, have set aside £120,000 to go to good causes and charities in Essex. We need nominations for some of the bigger good causes that we can make £5,000 donations to. That will be matched by the MCF, so they'll receive £10,000. We've already got nominations for the RNLI, Life Lights um, and Essex Air Ambulance, but we need some more so that we can actually get that money to where it's needed. In addition to that, we've set aside £500 to go to 120 lodges and chapters. If they're going to be making a donation of up to £500, we will match fund it. Um, we need those applications in before the 31st of July and it is on a first come first served basis and we're getting applications in on a daily basis. I know some lodges will worry that we've not met yet, we can't vote on making donations of 500 pounds. These are exceptional times and they can deal with this on email or phone calls. If they get the support of the majority of the brethren to do it, they can ratify that when they do have a meeting and put it on the summons. But it is acceptable at this time to do it that way. We need those nominations. That's a, a great initiative, but I suppose the, the big question is, when do we get back to normal? Well, we've been working with the Masonic Centres in Essex to ensure that they're match fit and ready to open safely for our members. Many of them are, uh, but some of them are reporting that under the current regulations, they won't be able to open on the 1st of September, and we're still collating details of those. I was encouraged, though, when the Prime Minister said that from the 1st of August, weddings would be allowed to dine up to 30 people afterwards. The problem that's stopping us from having meetings is current legislation prevents more than two family groups dining together. If a wedding party can dine, I'm sure the regulations will actually allow a lodge to dine and we can start our meetings again. I look forward to that. Does this mean that we'll also be seeing a provincial meeting sometime soon? No. The Book of Constitutions requires every provincial grand lodge and provincial grand chapter to hold a meeting once in every year. We weren't able to do that in March because of the lockdown, but we will be able to hold effectively a quorum meeting in October just to conduct the business of the province by signing off on the accounts and electing key people to posts. Uh, but we won't be able to have brethren at that meeting because of the re restrictions. Paul Reeves, Deputy Provincial Grandmaster in charge, thank you. Thank you.